All right. So this is the first project that I teach beginners. We're just going to start with a simple cylinder, basically a mug. I'm going to take my bat. I find these three bumps. This is a speedball bat. And there's three bumps on the outside edge that correspond to these nice holes. I put my fingers over those. I find the bat pins and I just drop it down and on. I take my chunk of clay, slap it on there good. Uh, there's a chance when you start throwing that this will scoot off. Um, a lot of times when that happens, it's because you started with a wet bat. And there's no reason to add water to the bat. There's no reason to have wet clay. It'll stick better if it's a little dry, and you use a dry bat. I put my pedal on the left side. You don't have to. You can put it on the right if you'd like. When your pots start getting really big, there's an advantage to having it on the left, but initially there isn't. Centering. Centering is the first step. If you've done any pottery at all, you know that. If you've seen a single video, you know that. Centering is simply making this round on the bat itself. And I just start by getting it wet. Now your clay, you know, it might be soft or it might be kind of tough. You know, for this amount of clay, it's not going to matter that much. It's nice when clay is soft, but it doesn't have to be. All right, add some water. Now here's the trick. Take your left elbow and bury it. Don't set it up on your leg. Move it over and drop it into your pelvis. Now, why do I do that? Why don't I just sit like this? Which I know you've seen a ton of that if you've watched videos. I don't sit like this because a lot of times I do large amounts of clay. And to be honest, it takes a lot of work through your chest and your shoulders and your arms to center with physical power. Your back's going to be sore. You're just going to work really hard. But there's a better way, or another way at least. It's to drop your elbow into your pelvis and lean so that my body, my body weight, creates enough power, enough leverage to get this to the middle. So here we go. I'll drag off any uneven clay in between every pass. Add a little water. Make sure my hand is wet. This is the part of my hand that's going to push at 7 o'clock. I lock my elbow in and I lean. Now this hand doesn't really have to do anything. Not to move it to the middle. This hand's job is just to flatten the top out. So I can just lean and then I can push down. Now it requires more force when you do it this way to push down than it does to lean in and that's a good thing. Most people would tell you it's much harder to push and that's because they're using arm strength. Now what I like to do is I like to move the clay so I lean in with my body it gets a little taller then I push down. Now when I push down this left hand needs to ease away. I force it down. The clay wants to get wider. I just let it come back. I stay up against it, but I let it come back. Let's do it again. I lean in. It gets taller. I push down. It gets wider. And I grab my thumb. Anytime your hands are connected when you're throwing, you have more stability. Stability is the name of the game. Power, power is overrated. The wheel, the wheel has a half horse motor. It produces more than enough power to center a small amount of clay and a large amount of clay. It's steady that you need to be. You just need to be locked in, lean, and be steady. And I ease away. If when I touch the clay and I'm pushing on, if I move off quick, it will always, always, always get uneven. Quick hands make sloppy pots. Gently on, gently off. Make sure that you're breathing, make sure that you're relaxed. And what I tell beginners is, when you're doing things like adding the water to your hands and cleaning off the bat and putting water on top, that's when you let the thoughts of the day come in. 
what do I need to get at the store later today? But when you put your hands on, once you've locked that elbow in and you lean forward, you focus on what you feel. You feel this hand and this elbow. If my elbow is doing this, if I can feel in my hip this tink, 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 I know the clay's not centered. I don't need to see the clay to know it. I can feel it. So a lot of times I'll look out at the bushes. You know, I'll close my eyes and I just feel my way there. I feel for that tapping. And when I take the tapping away, I'm dialed in and I ease off. Okay. All right, so I've changed the angle of the camera. I'm going to show you centering again real quickly from this angle, and then I'm going to open. So we'll get this off. Thick part of my hand. Now you won't be able to see my elbow as well, or at all. I'm locking it in. But look at the hand position. Now, if I go palm up, I create this mushroom effect, warms. it creates this scoop, this convex curve. I don't want that. So to make sure that doesn't happen, I just go palm down. Palm down will give me this shape that I'm looking for, that nice curved. I want to be slightly wider than I am tall. Don't do these narrow tall things when you're starting. Add some water. I'm going to push down. And I'm going to lean in, push down, and I lean in. And when I push down, my whole body moves back a little bit. And when I lean in, my whole body shifts forward behind that elbow. It's not my arm pushing away from my body. And that's what a lot of beginners will do, is they'll start, they'll have their arm, their elbow, push away and essentially leave their body to get more pressure instead of just moving their body up behind the elbow. Now for the opening. So opening, we're creating the inside bottom of a piece. And there are two ways to do this. You can use your fingers or you can use your thumbs. I'm going to show you the thumbs. I go thumbnail to thumbnail. I rest my fingers on the clay. I find the middle. Where's the middle? The middle is the spot where everything comes around you. You can feel it because you don't get pulled side to side. I add a little water, I push down a little bit, and I stop. Now, what else is important besides this trying to stay in the middle? Well, it's my stability. And where do I get my stability from? From my elbows, being resting, resting on my legs. So I've got my elbows down, my elbows are sitting on them, I'm pushing down, and I can stop and move to the middle. If I feel like I get out of the middle, I can just stop, refine the middle, and then start pushing down again. Okay, so I've created the hole, which takes us down to the bottom now. What I want to do now is check my thickness. So I'm going to take a needle, stop the wheel when you do this, stick it all the way through until it's resting on the back. Take your finger and take it all the way down until it touches the bottom of the clay and grab the needle tightly, pull them back out together. And that's great. I want to be somewhere between here and here. So there's a nice little window there. I'm inside of that. Now I'm going to flatten this out slightly. And all I did was put my finger and thumb and I laid my finger across the top with my other hand. Come up slowly. Now, if I'm making a mug, this would be the world's narrowest mug because the inside width is what determines what the mug will look like. Not out here. This clay gets pushed in when it comes up. So I need to go ahead and set the width for the mug. So I'm going to put two fingers in and I use my dominant hand. It doesn't really matter though. I Occasionally I switch. I put my other hand right on top and I like to kind of hook my hands together. And this hand's job is just to create extra support, stability, and a little bit of power. But this hand is really doing the work. And what I will do is I'm actually going to curl my fingertips back a little bit. And then I'm going to straighten that wall out. So in essence, 
I'm undercutting and I'll bring that out so you can see a little bit better. I'm undercutting and then I can just pull the top of that wall back. Now, a lot of people will just pull the whole wall back straight and you can do that too. Um, the only reason I don't do it that way is because as your pots get bigger, it becomes very hard to be steady when you're pulling this giant mass of clay back, but it's pretty easy to undercut it. And it's pretty easy to pull back a wall that has been undercut. I'm going to fix this rim again. I always watch the rim. If it gets a little funny, I just clean it up. And I did the same thing as before. Just a little pinch, a little bit of pressure. The inside bottom right now, I want to clean that up a little bit. So I'm going to roll my sponge through and compress. Now, looking at this width, I would say I'm maybe I'm just still a tiny bit narrow for what I want. So I'm going to widen it. Just like before, using my fingertips to do the work. And I, this time, I don't even need to lay the wall back. It all came back together. And now I'll compress again. There's a few reasons to compress. One, it just cleans up the bottom. And two, it kind of compacts the clay, which can reduce cracking. Generally, uh, a mug, you're not going to have a lot of cracking issues. But that's why you do it. And some of those big bowls you do in the future, it's probably a really good thing, or a platter. It's really a good thing to, to do a lot of compressing. OK, so now we need to bring the clay up. And I'm going to leave it at this camera angle. I'm going to do a pull. And then I'm going to move the camera so that you can see my right hand a lot better. I'm going to bring my chair up a little bit. If you have a stool that you're sitting on that doesn't adjust, that's okay. Just get close to your clay. Move your stool really far forward. Get your legs up against the pan. Make sure that your hands are really nice and wet. And I want you to put a couple of fingers on the inside. Two, three, doesn't matter. Um, but here's the thing. We don't want to get those fingers really involved by pushing out. We're not making a bowl. We're making a mug. So I need the clay to come up. And what I really want is for the clay to come up and in as I'm raising. And then I'll add the shape later into the mug's final shape. With my right hand, there's a few ways I can put pressure on the outside. Some potters use a couple of fingers on the outside, and they do that at 3 o'clock. I'll show you over here so you can see it better. Uh, they might take a sponge, wrap it over their fingers, and hold that up against. I like this a lot. Uh, but my favorite, at least at the bottom of a pot, is a knuckle pull. And basically what that looks like is your knuckle actually rests on the bat. I hold a sponge, but you don't have to. But all of this surface right here, all of that, I'll tuck my thumb in, all of that ends up against the clay. So I've got this big chunk of surface touching. Just like when you use three fingers, you're covering a lot of surface, and that really helps. Avoid things where you're just barely touching the clay, where it's just one finger's contact, you'll start to really dig some deep grooves into the pot, and that's not advantageous. Okay, so here we go. I've got all of this hand here. My inside hand is barely going to do anything. I'm going to push with the outside hand. And I could actually take my inside hand out and just push, and it would get taller, and it would go into the shape I want. But if I have just a little bit of pressure there, just, just a hint, something to push against, then the clay will come up faster. All right, I'm going to switch. Okay, so I've turned my wheel a little bit and brought the camera up so that you can see 3 o'clock for me, which from where I'm sitting, I'm actually sitting right here. This is 3 o'clock. So what I'd like you to do is make that knuckle when you try your first raise. Inside hand, two or three fingers, doesn't matter. Use the thumb of your inside hand to come over and rest on the outside hand. So it looks like this. Now I push from the outside. Inside hand barely doing anything. And I climb. Now, as I climb, I let the energy between my hands, the pressure between my hands, dissipate. Because up here, it's going to thin out much quicker than it is at the bottom, where most of the clay is. So again, I'm going to push. 
and I'm going to climb. See my pace? My pace is always the same. doesn't matter what I'm doing. doesn't matter what I make. I have a slow but steady pace. I never, never want to stop. I never want to speed up. I just want to keep moving through the pot the entire time. This time I'm going to use my fingertips with the sponge over them to show you that. So it looks like this. And I'm actually going to push with the bottom finger first and then apply pressure across the three pretty evenly and I'm climbing. Again, a nice steady pace. And that just comes up. I take that clay away. I let my mind think about my grocery list. Add a little water. And I use quite a bit of water when I'm raising. I think that's okay. Um, I will use tons on a big piece. And then I work drier when I'm shaping. Uh, I don't have a lot of problems with bottom cracking, which is generally the argument for not doing it. Uh, my clay is strong all the way through the throw. So it's not really an issue. If you need to use more water to be more fluid, you should. Sometimes you'll get a bag of clay that's just a little wetter, and maybe you don't need to apply as much water. I'm going to use my fingertips again this time. I'm pushing in with the bottom finger first, and I'm climbing. Okay. At the top, let's say that it gets off or it's dented. Go back to that A. Finger and thumb. And push down. Okay, then. okay. So this guy is pretty far along. The last thing to do is to add some shape. And with the mug, to be honest, we could just leave it like this. You could also do just some simple embellishment. You probably have one of these tools if you bought a basic tool kit drawing. And what you could do is you could bring this up against the edge and you could push everything out to this rib. Now when I do that, I lean on my right elbow to keep my arm as steady as possible. I also tighten my right knee up against the pan so that I've got a little bit of extra stability there too. Now with the mug, you have the option you could take this clay away or you could kind of leave it hanging out there and that's kind of fun too. Uh, and this can be trimmed to make the shape a little funner down here, but there's no reason to do it right now. You're still going to have to trim this, not today, but tomorrow once this is dry enough to be trimmed. Now. At the top, we could also do a little embellishment. I could hold the tool back there again. I could actually just pull it out slightly if I wanted to create something interesting at the top. Okay, so that's a basic mug. Let's say that we want to add a little bit of curve in our mug. How would we do that? We're going to go back to the hand positioning that we used during raising. I'm going to use the fingertips this time. And with my inside hand, I'm going to push out just like this. So I roll my fingers through. That's how we create a curve. Now the outside hand, if it stays motionless and in, all I'm going to do is thin the clay between my two hands. But if this moves out, into the shape as well, then I can create that curve. They just dance together here. Again, I'm going to get my stool really close, add a little bit of water, but I don't really need it here. I'm not trying to bring clay up. I just need to make sure my hands are wet. And now I'm going to roll my fingers out. My outside hand is just allowing that shape to occur. I'm moving into the same shape. I'm going to drop back to the bottom and I'm going to do it again. Push out. 
roll through. There we go. And can you shape down as well as coming up? Yes, you can. I could reverse here. The key here is how steady I am. And how did I accomplish that? The answer was back here again. I had my elbow buried between my leg and my trunk, and I leaned on it. And then I've got my forearm resting on my leg. And if you say, well, my legs are too short, well, bring in a block. I've got a big block for when I throw big pots that brings my leg up significantly. Well, that gives me a lot of extra support. So something you can do at home, even just, just a brick will go a long way if you're having trouble. And even on your centering, you may feel like, I can't get, uh, I can't get that elbow buried. Well, if you bring your foot up, and again, I have the pedal over here, so my leg is brought up, but you could put a block on that side, just a one brick, and put your foot on that. That would lift your leg enough to make it easier to find a spot to bury that elbow. Okay, so since I bellied out, when I was focusing on this, of course, this is going to get just a little bit off. So we need to touch this up before we're done. And just to make it interesting, let's, let's do it in a couple different ways here. This, this is no longer straight, so I don't think we'll use that one. I could just make it fairly straight here. So in other words, all I did here was push out with my fingertips up against that to create that. And that would be one way to finish it. Another way would be to add a little curve into that, and that might be kind of fun. Let's bring this back, and I'm going to do what's called collaring. And I use the second finger and the thumb to do it. I squeeze between the two. Why not the first finger? Because sometimes you're collaring low on a pot, and it's nice to be able to reach up and support something above while you're doing that. So I'm going to collar this in gently, just a little squeeze. Now I'm going to take my finger, put it right in the middle here, and I'm going to push in. And at the same time, I'm just going to gently support that rim on the inside. Just ever so gently. And it just creates this nice, easy curve. Now the last thing, now you can do this now, or you could actually wait. If you take this off and you let it dry for an hour, this thing would be significantly thicker, or stiffer, sorry. And then you could just take your sponge and come back and ease over this. If it's, if it's weak, I would encourage you to do it that way. If it feels really strong and it's in great shape, you can still do it now. Push in to create that curve, and then I come over the edge ever so gently. Now let's say you get to this stage and unfortunately your pot, the rim is let's say just really uneven. You have a high side maybe uh, because you're newer and it was harder. You didn't get it quite centered. You didn't open it as well and so you end up with this really high side. How do we fix that? So the camera will show you and get a good view of what I'm doing. To cut this rim, I'm going to take my basic needle. I'm going to put a finger, so I, my fingers will need to be wet, I'm going to put a finger on the inside, and in essence I'm creating kind of a C shape here. I'm going to take my other hand, hold my needle between my thumb and first finger, and I'm actually going to rest it right on this other thumb. Well, why? Because I want to create a triangle. Triangle is steady. Both my elbows are down. Now I connect my hands. Now I'm much steadier. And if I just hold this out in space, I'm much more likely to get bumped around by the clay as it pushes on the needle. I want to be stronger than that clay pushing, and this allows me to be that. So I roll my finger in for support to the clay, and then instead of just stabbing straight into this at 6 o'clock, I'm actually going to point the needle over here at like 1.30. But I'm working at 6, with the needle again, kind of 1.30, 2 o'clock. My hands are connected. Look how I've got those together. Look at all that stability I'm getting. And then the first step here is just to make a line. Barely touch it. 
I want to see that line all the way around before I begin to push. And then I just ever so gently push forward. And I lift. Now, some of this tore a little bit. We got just a little bit of muck. And we can just gently touch it just with the fingers and clean that back up. Here it is again. Finger in. Lay it on. Pointing my needle at one o'clock. I make a line first. Then I push it in. And I lift. Perfect. Add a little water. And to round that out again, I just kind of do that A. Gentle pressure. Take my sponge. Wrap it around. And now if this needs to be changed, now's the time. I can just go ahead and curl it back out if I wanted to. Okay. Um, if you want to decorate it a little bit, you can certainly do that. Adding a line is as simple as using that stick to push. And at the bottom, you can take this clay away now, but to be honest, I never do. I leave it there and I trim it off. And that would happen tomorrow. So the next part of this video, I'm going to add a handle. Hope that was helpful.